Chris B, the CEO of Tesla Marketing. Hello, Chris. How are you? So, you are the CEO of Tesla Marketing. Yes. How has it been so far? How long has it been? We are in December. Because there has been breaks. If you have to come from January, then it's been almost 12 months. And so apparently you started while you were still a student. Yes, we are in final year. Final year. Wow. So how are you doing? It's mixing studies with business. I mean, it wasn't easy because business alone is a full time activity and academic work is a full time activity. So it's like you killing two birds with one stone. It wasn't that easy, but um, based on accurate time management and uh, the desire to succeed, we managed to combine both. Yeah, we were successful. Yeah. Okay, so if I may ask, how did all this come about? Is it like um, you started brainstorming for ideas or it just came into your mind and then you decided to accomplish? <laughs> Naturally, I I don't miss them for years. Someone who always look around for problems to solve. Solve to get money, actually. <laughs> Nobody does nothing for free. I, I attend programs a lot. Seminars, parties, birthdays, funerals, weddings, and I, I made an observation, especially with student programs. I realized that uh, most of the time, yeah, refreshment is one way. And someone who also has passion for cooking. So, uh, well, then what can I do with my passion to earn some money? So, I decided to enter into food business. But as to whether it was pizza, I didn't know. So until I attended the program and I realized that no, the, the item that they like in 13, just as you say it, that was given to the students. It was just pie and people were complaining that oh we've been eating pie for long you know you're going to change it and well, that was that it just came to mind so what can i do to replace the pie and i thought of so many things cake came in mind donuts came in mind waffles pancake and other stuff. So, pizza pizza never came in mind until i met one guy scott prince so through our talks and was like he knows how to do pizza be my friend, it's no good. No pizza is not that thing at all. It's like, well, we can give it a try. So, when you, when, you, when you made that statement, I had nothing that we can use to do pizza. Not to do nothing. So, I decided to go to town and then get this item. You see, that's, wow. that's, that's just a work of faith. Yes. And the pizza too was quite expensive for a student like me because I was in final year by then. So, we bought an oven. That was second hand oven actually, not the, uh, the brand new second hand. We bought some uh, pizza tray and other items that we need to repair the pizza. We did a sample. The sample came out to be nice, but we were left to how to market it. So, because I engaged in politics way back in the third year, and yeah, I had some friends who are currently holding positions on campus. So, I, I spoke to one of them and then they decided to try my product during one of their programs. She also assisted me by faith. Because you've not tested it before, and you just want to buy my, my product or your program, which you're expecting a lot of people. So, if you also agree, then, then you're more going to you know, sell during your program. So, it wasn't easy. I think we, we, were, we were actually supplied thousands slices of pizza just for our first contract. That was on 27 January. I'll never forget that day. We started as beginners and experienced. We started up around 6 a.m. We met at 10 p.m. and we were only able to produce 350 slices out of thousands. But we're still happy because uh, someone who has no idea about how pizza is being made and then you just start and get a contract and be able to serve at least a number. It's a present number. So since then we decided to work. Um, pizza, you know, pizza is not something we eat on days. As in, I didn't eat pizza every day. So how is it trying? 
people would just be the ones they love. So how do you Was there any time you felt like giving up? As in, this thing is not going to work. Let me just give up on it. Well, I'm an optimist. Mm -hmm. yes. Throughout my life, uh, I barely think negative. Until something occurred somewhere this year in February. That made me have a negative mindset in life. But until then, see, that, that happened in January. I was never a negative thinker. I have a lot of positive receptors in my head. So I don't think negative, but I'm this kind of person who has a belief that whatever that you invest in, if you invest in hard work, if you invest in determination, if you invest in prayers, you can't take that out. If you invest in your strength, you can to report. Because I read the story of McDonald's, started in the kiosk. For me, I was fortunate I studied in my hospital. If I read the story of uh, Colonel Sandels, for him, he was an old man, around 65, when he started pursuing his dreams. I'm young and energetic, but I don't see the reason why uh, mine won't work. So, I, I never felt like giving up. No. Yeah. 
So, um, apart from it being on Ken University, do you have any plans of taking it to maybe other campuses or taking it to town as an expanding? You have plans. You do have plans. Many are the plans of man, but we are limited by resource. You know what I'm talking about, so I won't go there. But we have, we have plans. We have plans of establishing ourselves in almost all the invest campuses in Ghana. Yes, and then from there, we can move to the town, uh, to the streets, because um, we must have the time. So, yeah. That's really enough motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what advice would you give to students who have entrepreneurship ideas, but then uh, perhaps who are afraid to accomplish them or bring them out? Uh, advice that I have for students who are afraid. Well, you can't be an entrepreneur if you have fears. Yes. Because all the things that we want, someone will say that the greatest things that we, we want in life, they lie at the other side of fear. So if you are afraid of fear, or if you are afraid of failure, then forget it, you can be an entrepreneur. Then and there we fail. But you only become a failure when you fail and decide not to get up. And failure shouldn't be the basis of success. It's, it's part of the success of So failure, you can take it out. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you are afraid of failing, you shouldn't start. And if they want to do it, they shouldn't wait for a perfect time because that perfect condition we see only exists in books. There is nothing like a perfect condition. Every condition is perfect. It depends on you. You need to learn how to adapt to work to it. Yeah. Thank you very much. But a quick one. Uh -huh. um, you've heard of GH Students Wallet. Yes, please. Um, how do you think students and entrepreneurs are going to benefit from this? Yeah. I think GH Student Wallet is one of the best initiatives so far that I've encountered and accomplished. The reason why it's going to, I would say that it's the best thing I've ever seen is that at times there are a lot of student entrepreneurs who need some exposure or probably who need to get some motivation from their fellow entrepreneurs to learn from. But we don't have any platform on campus that provides that service. So uh, I believe that GH Student Wallet is coming here to interview me, I believe someone will be like my story. Because I did actuarial science. I'm supposed to be doing mathematics, but I'm here needing class to understand. So um, you shouldn't always be uh, skewed to one direction that because you did this program you have to do something in that relation. At times you might have passion for different things. But because um, we feel that if you don't go into the what we studied at university, our friends might make fun of us or probably people will say that we are being unsuccessful or uh, I, I just don't know how to put it, but you have to follow your passion. That is it. Because I remember that there's this movie, Three Idiots. Um, there was this girl supposed to be a wildlife photographer, but he was first reading engineering. At the end, he had no passion for engineering. Later, he went into photography. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, I'm sending a message out there to all the students who have passion for entrepreneurship. Forget about the program you are reading. I'm not saying don't take academic work serious. Take it serious. But if you realize that this is what you have interest in, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, you know, right? I remember that. Yes, go for it. <laughs> okay, thank uh -huh. you very much, Chris V, for joining us today. Uh, thank you also for being with us. This was the Startup Journey brought to you by Nancy Apotetiria. Thank you.